In the late 1800s to early 1900s, America stepped into the Gilded Age. The term Gilded Age refers to the process of gilding or refining in gold. This time period is known for its huge focus on material wealth, but beneath its thin gold coating, there were deep-seated issues. The construction of the first transcontinental railroad united the country. People were able to get places faster and getting across the country was a lot easier. Railroads created new cities and everything drove into a wave of industrialization. Coal, iron, and oil were more important than ever. This time of great economic wealth was led by big business leaders, but these businessmen were also nicknamed robber barons because of their mistreatment of workers and their use of monopolies. Work in factories was difficult and the employees were treated no different than slaves. New inventions molded the American lifestyle, but it was at the expense of workers. Immigrants flooded the North and West only to be mistreated as laborers and companies were lost to big business. This wave of industrial revolution created what we know as corporate America. For leaders of these big businesses such as Andrew Carnegie and John D. Rockefeller, wealth was not an issue. They struck it rich with their innovative ideas and they completely revolutionized industry in America. Carnegie ruled the world of the railroads while Rockefeller controlled American oil. These businessmen opened the door to a whole new way of working. Products were getting out there faster, were made better, and were cheaper. Andrew Carnegie was one of the biggest leaders in industry. His story was one of rags to riches. He immigrated to the U.S. from Scotland in 1848 and started with nothing, but he had an incredible vision. He was able to see America years into the future, and he saw a world run on steel. This was a good five years before steel was dominating the industry, but he knew it would happen. He revolutionized the industry and convinced railroad companies that steel tracks would last longer. The introduction of steel created a new world of easy travel and provided more jobs for the people. The Basimer process simplified the creation of steel and offered an inexpensive way to produce this useful metal. Molten pig iron was oxidized in a large container with elements added and removed in order to produce steel. This process only took 15 to 20 minutes, but it yielded the material that would revolutionize industry, steel. The entire country became connected by steel railroad tracks. All of a sudden, people could move to cities for work. Shipping goods became feasible and inexpensive, so companies transported their goods across the nation. The flood of immigrants found paying jobs in the industry of steel. They put together the railroads and indirectly helped unite the country. For this reason, big business leaders earned the title Captains of Industry. Carnegie was an innovator, and he held a huge percentage of the nation's wealth. He was one of the wealthiest men in all of America, but he believed that wealth wasn't intended for selfish purposes. In the Gospel of Wealth, he illustrated how money is supposed to be shared in order to help others. He was specific about money being redistributed responsibly. It wasn't supposed to be donated to charity because charities weren't always clear about how the money helped. That's why he used his wealth to build libraries, where there was a direct impact, but he still mistreated his employees. Big business leaders lived good lives due to their accomplishments and contributions, but their employees were mistreated. They refused to pay their workers high enough wages to live, but then they donated millions to build public libraries, to establish universities, and to help many more philanthropic causes. Carnegie gave over $350 million for philanthropy. A majority of his capital, he made it a priority to promote education and world peace. Despite all the philanthropy, Big business leaders refused to help their workers. Their workers operated faulty machinery for hours on end, and injuries were rampant. Oftentimes, lighting and sanitation were also poor and led to accidents in the workplace. Young children were hired because of their small hands, and most of them dropped out of school to feed their families. The workers couldn't simply quit. Their lives were on the line. Scabs could easily replace them and take their meager paycheck, and on top of that, they'd starve. 
big business leaders were well aware of this, and they thought of this as an opportunity to take advantage of the less fortunate. They lowered wages even more during winter, because families were cold and hungry. That was the worst possible time to quit, so they made it nearly impossible to do so. Even while depriving their workers and hurting them, the big business leaders, or rather robber barons, still believed that their charitable donations made up for this. Oh, hey, didn't see you there. I see no reason to increase wages, to improve working conditions. If someone wants to rise out of poverty, they'll work for it. They need to take it upon themselves and earn what they want. It's not my job to give them handouts and allow the weak to prosper. No, no, I've earned my business. No, I've earned my success. And it's time for them to do that as well. I already do so much to help the community and I've donated millions to the masses to enjoy. Besides, the labor... The labor now has more comforts than the landlord had a few generations ago. I said that in the Gospel of Wealth and it's true. I also said that the wealthy must provide moderately for the legitimate wants of those dependent upon it. I provide. I help. I take all the surplus and put it towards helping the masses in a way that I can recognize, such as a building, a library, higher wages. How do I know where the money's going? No. How is that charitable? It's not. Call me a robber baron if you want for mistreating my workers or creating monopolies that drive other entrepreneurs out of business, but I'm charitable. Although business leaders of the Gilded Age donated millions for libraries and other public places, this doesn't excuse their mistreatment of workers. Their libraries hardly made an impact because everyone who needed a little library was at work all day and night at a factory. The leaders of big business were robber barons because they violated human rights through mistreatment of workers. Alongside Carnegie as a robber baron was John D. Rockefeller. He started as a 16-year-old bookkeeper in Cleveland, Ohio. Rockefeller grew to be the world's wealthiest man of his time, owning 90% of the refining oil in America with the Standard Oil Company by building a trust. He became known as the poster child for capitalism. When the Sherman Antitrust Act was passed, Rockefeller cleverly split his company by giving it to about 200 trusted individuals spreading across the country from Manhattan to the Gulf Coast. They were all together worth a collective net worth of $10 billion. He obtained all this wealth in the palm of his hands, founded the University of Chicago, and the family continued his legacy with the Rockefeller Foundation. This method of buying out his competitors and partners, people thought of it as monopolizing him. Even as these big business leaders swam in wealth, there was poverty everywhere. Workers slaved away at their jobs to rake in meager earnings, while their employers acted as robber barons, monopolizing the industries. Rockefeller worked with railroads to force off other refining companies. One way he did this was that he and the railroads discounted each other for transportation of oil, but increased the price for other refineries. George Rice, an individual refiner in Marietta, Ohio, testified to the U.S. Industrial Commission. It turned out that he was being charged by railroads for 35 cents a barrel for transportation, while the Standard Oil Company was charged 10 cents a gallon. In addition to that, the railroad was forced to pay Standard Oil Company a drawback of 25 cents a barrel that Rice's company shipped out. To quote George Rice, with their unlawfully acquired monopoly, Standard Oil Trust could cut customer prices temporarily to sell them to blow their costs, thus effectively wiping out competition. In addition to that, Rockefeller made threats to my agents who were buying my oil. He went as far as telling one of my agents in New Orleans that his company would pay $48,000 for him to handle with my oil. The big business leaders took advantage of the new era that the Gilded Age brought. They incorporated business tactics, they made their companies work more efficiently and more cost effective. However, it was at the expense of their workers and other entrepreneurs. Their workers slaved away for long, harsh hours in unsafe conditions and the robber barons made no move to help them. They also drove other entrepreneurs out of business with their harsh strategies, so their success remained pinned only to them.
The big business leaders or robber barons inhibited the lives and successes of others across America by monopolizing their corporations, and they knowingly mistreated their workers time and time again. Their impact on the economy was revolutionary, but their greater impact of monopolization of businesses and mistreatment of workers proves to be their biggest legacy as robber barons.